this morning also as we are gathering together in the presence of god and i believe that the heavenly father the almighty god is going to speak to the people of god those who are going through in a difficult situation or the struggles in their life hallelujah so this morning let us expect the the the, the great word of god from the lord even though a servant of god is speaking let us expect something from the lord almighty god and he is going to speak to us hallelujah so this morning the the topic that we ha i have selected is like uh, in the spirit on the lord's day in the spirit on the lord's day amen so that is the is the main topic that i would like to i mean speak to you this morning and uh, we are sitting in the presence of god and let us amen listen the word of god for that may uh, uh, dear brother jason will be uh, reading the bible verses and he will be supporting me in this message so uh, uh, brother jason i would like to read uh, uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 10 i mean uh, the topic is in the spirit on the lord's day in the spirit on the lord's day that is from book of revelation chapter 1 verse 10 on the lord's day i was in the spirit and i heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet praise god hallelujah so as we read you know I, I, the, the the reason that i picked the uh, this verse maybe uh, chapter 1 verse 10 uh, from the book of revelation is you know uh, there are many people uh, uh, they are not able to attend for the uh, bible study on friday uh, there are many people they they want to attend but because of the work they are not able to attend for the a bible study on friday so uh, usually we are having a bible study evening 7:30 on friday and there are many people those who are not able to attend but uh, i mean i, I thought uh, maybe if i'm taking and speaking something from uh, from the chapter 1 uh, and that would be a, a blessing for those people those who are not able to participate for this bible study so here there has come to that i mean verse it says that john says i was in the spirit on the lord's day i was in the spirit on the lord's day okay in malayalam it is kartru divasathil nan aatma vivashan ai kartru divasathil nan aatma vivashan ai so the topic is in the spirit on the lord's day in the spirit on the lord's day hallelujah so let me let me tell you something about the lord's day which is mentioned in this verse the lord's day which is mentioned in this verse kartru divasam hallelujah you know usually when we read about the lord's day uh, in this verse also all of a sudden the thought that comes in our mind is that okay john was filled with the holy spirit on sunday and but 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 it's not clear clearly written uh, in this verse or anywhere in the in the in the same book of revelation that it was on sunday or saturday he was in the spirit and he received the visions from the lord we are not sure and it is not clearly written about which was the day that he was receiving the messages and the visions from the lord from the island of patmos but let me tell you something about the phrase which is used there the lord's day okay all of a sudden we think okay it was a sunday it was a sunday that i mean uh, john was receiving the visions and the revelation from god but let me tell you one thing the the the, the specific phrase which is used there the lord's day we have to think about that what is that the lord's day means what you know according to the teachings of a uh, jewish people the lord's day is the day of judgment the lord's day is the is the is the day of judgment i mean and uh, uh, for jewish people saturday is the lord's day saturday is the lord's day or or worshiping uh, day but in the new testament according to uh, mark chapter 6 verse 2 mark chapter 6 verse 2 uh, i mean uh, sorry 16 verse 2 mark chapter 16 verse 2 i mean the word used for sunday is the first day of the week we will read that verse maybe mark chapter 16 verse 2 yeah very early on the first day of the week just after sunrise they were on their way to the tomb okay it says that the first day of the week okay for the sunday it is used there in the new testament in mark chapter 16 verse 2 it says that the first day of the week 
But according to the Roman background, according to the Roman background, in the first century, uh, there was a Caesar worship. It was promoted, Caesar worship. You know, Julius Caesar, he said, uh, okay, you all people have to worship me and I am the Lord. So he said, you know, Julius Caesar was one of the Roman emperors of a uh, Roman kingdom. So he just promoted that the season worship, season worship. And the Roman emperor Domitian, Domitian made a declaration that once in a year, the people must say Caesar is the only Lord and Caesar is the only Lord and Caesar is the only Lord. You know, they have to say that everyone, everyone in the kingdom, they have to say that Caesar is the only Lord, Caesar is the only Lord three times in a year. So, and if in case anybody refused to say that, that person must be killed. That person must be killed. So in those days, that day was known as the Lord's Day. In the days of Apostle John, or in the days when, I mean, John was receiving this vision, in those days, that day, or that day was known as the Lord's Day, and they were, I mean, I mean, considering it, it, it was, it was not as the, I mean, uh, God Heavenly Father's Day, but it was the Caesar's Day, the Lord Caesar's Day, because he was promoting that you have to uh, say that in Caesar only is the Lord, and the Roman government took that as an opportunity to persecute the, the Christians. Because he was clearly knowing that at any cost, the Christians who believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior will never say that Caesar is the Lord. It's very clear. You know, he was knowing. You know, the Roman, I mean, government was knowing. The emperor was knowing. Maybe Domitian also was knowing that, I mean, there is no chance. The Christian will not say that Caesar is the Lord because they're believing. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of the people. So he was understanding that on the basis of that, he thought, I mean, we can destroy the Christians. That means if they are not worshiping Caesar, if the Christians are not worshiping, I mean, as Caesar, or if the Christians are not, uh, I mean, obeying the command of uh, the, 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 the emperor, then that is the chance for us to destroy the Christians. And that day, was a painful day for all the Christians and many Christians were put into the death. That was the situation in that place. So this is the background of Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. This is the background of uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. And we are not sure that it was Saturday or Sunday. Uh, I mean, uh, that, uh, I mean, he was uh, receiving the, the visions from the Lord and he was writing this I mean, book of Revelation. It is not clear. Whatever it may be, on that day, something special and amazing things happened, I mean, in the life of Apostle John. You know, we have to think about that. You know, there are many things that he received from the Lord and something special had happened in the life of, I mean, Apostle John. I mean, amazing things happened in the life of, I mean, John. Now, before we look into the amazing things that what happened in his life on the, on the Lord's day, let us try to know why John was exiled to the to the island of Patmos. And you know, you know, when I'm speaking about these things, you know, uh, you may be getting 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 a confusion that I mean, I mean, when should we worship the Lord? Is it on Saturday or on Sunday? So we don't have time to speak about all those things, but we will come to that point maybe when we are taking the classes on Friday. But I mean. You know, you know, if you worship the if you worship the Lord on Saturday also there is no problem. On Sunday also there is no problem. On Friday also there is no problem. I mean, any day you can worship the Lord. But according to the convenience of the people and and all over the world, many places, many countries. I mean, the government is giving the holiday on Sunday, so the people are gathering together on Sunday. Uh, that that's only one thing that we have to think about this time, okay? And uh, even even in, in Gulf countries, they are worshiping God on Friday only, okay? On Friday only. So, I mean, uh, uh, Friday is the Lord's day for them. But for us, uh, Sunday is the Lord's day for them. It's, it's our, uh, according to the convenience that we are gathering together on Sunday. So that's not a matter of uh, the message today. But, uh, I mean, I would like to tell you something else that is, uh, I mean, why, why John was banished to, to the island of Patmos before? I mean, thinking about, uh, I mean, those things that uh, John received from the Lord on the Lord's day. 
we will be thinking about why John was banished to the island of Patmos. I mean, so let me tell you one thing that John was ministering in Ephesus church. John was ministering in Ephesus church, but because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, he was banished to the, to the island of Patmos by the Roman emperor Domitian. It is there in chapter 1 verse 9. It is there in chapter 1 verse 9. You know, because of the word of God, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus, he was banished to the island of Patmos by the Roman emperor. I mean, Domitian, Domitian. And it is believed that John was about, about 89 year old man, about 89, maybe 90 or 91 or something. And while he was exiled or banished to the island of Patmos, can you think about the old man, maybe, maybe 90 years old man, banished to the, the island of Patmos and he is being there alone. It's not possible. I mean, I was thinking if I am I'm banished to some, some places, which is a remote place or somewhere, I mean, I can't bear it. I mean, so, but I mean, by the spirit of God and by the presence of God, by the power of God, I mean, by the word of God, I mean, John was saying that okay, I'm ready to go there because I know one thing that God is going to use me. I mean, I'm useful. I'm a useful vessel in Ephesus. I'm a useful vessel in the, in the Asia Minor. But I know one thing that, I mean, if God is sending me to the island of Patmos and God is able and God is willing to use me for the kingdom of God, I mean, I mean, if even though I am in the in the island of Patmos. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that, I mean, he was exiled or banished to the island of I mean, Patmos. And history says the Christians, Christian churches were going through many, many persecutions during those times. I mean, the, 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 the Christians were going through many, I mean, tough situations, hardship in their life. I mean, in those days, even Apostle, Apostle John also had to go through many persecutions as the minister of the church. So he was ministering in an Ephesus church and he had to go on, I mean, into the, into the burner of boiled oil. But he was delivered from all those turmoils. And then he was banished to the island of Patmos by the emperor Domitian. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know why he was banished to this island of Patmos. What is the reason that Apostle John was banished from Ephesus to the island of Patmos? It was because he was preaching and spreading the gospel in different places of Asia Minor. And also he was planting many churches in that area. So that is the only focus that Apostle John was having because John was a disciple of Jesus Christ and he was selected by God to, to proclaim the gospel in different places. And he went to many places, especially in Asia Minor. He was trying to plant many churches and establish many churches there. And he was spreading the gospel in different places. You know, in that time, in that time, you know, there was, there was many persecutions from uh, the, the Roman emperors. You know, that's the reason that so the Roman government also decided one thing, to put him away from Ephesus. Because otherwise, if he is being in Ephesus or Asia Minor, he will be, I mean, I mean spreading the gospel all over the area and he is going to, I mean, establish many churches. So they decided, the, the Roman government decided one thing, that we will put him away from Ephesus and let him have some struggles in that island and where there is nobody to help him and where there is nobody to support him. I mean, and they thought with this, I mean, we will stop spreading the gospel in that real religion or, or region. And we will do one thing. We will stop I mean, speaking about the Christianity and we will stop the Christianity itself from our region. I mean, because of sending this apostle John to, to, the, to the island of Patmos. Hallelujah. And they thought, let him, let him wander there somewhere and let him die there itself. Because in those days, I mean, whoever is banished to Patmos were not able to come back because it was a remote area. I mean, it was a remote area. You know, so the people, those who were going to that place, I mean, maybe banished to the, the island of Patmos, there were, there were almost 2,000 uh, uh, islands in, the, in those days. And uh, only in 200 islands, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there were the people were living. But this Patmos is a different, uh, the island of Patmos is a different Patmos, I mean, uh, island. 
you know, if a person is going there and if, if a person is banished to that place, that person cannot come back. That much remote area is that. Even I heard uh, uh, there, 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 is, there is a prison. There, uh, there was a prison in uh, California also uh, near San Francisco uh, area. Uh, it, was, it was known as the, what, what was that? I mean, uh, 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 Alcatraz. Okay, Alcatraz or something. Okay, but it was closed in uh, 1963 or something. Okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, the people also were banished to that place, uh, into that place, and into that prison. It was a prison. And nobody uh, can come out of that. But in, I think uh, uh, I heard something that in 1963, three prisoners came out from that per I mean, prison. So it is now it is closed. You know, there were some places in California also. But this is the same place, you know, the same like that place it is in, in Patmos also. So those days, the island, the island of Patmos has been used as a prison, as a prison to put most dangerous and, I mean, notorious criminals, notorious criminals were sent to the, I mean, island of Patmos and they were, I mean, sending them and banishing them to there. And John also was sent to the island of Patmos just as a criminal. Think about the situation, how John was facing this difficult situation. Hallelujah. He was sent, he was banished and he was sent to the island of Patmos just like a criminal. Because the early Christians were considered, I mean, as the people causing trouble within the empire, you know? So the other criminals might have considered, I mean, Apostle John also as a criminal. And they were looking at him and saying, okay, what is the crime that you have done? I mean, and, but in reality, he never do any crime, but the only thing that he did is preached the gospel, hallelujah. That's the only reason that John was banished to the island of Patmos, but the other people, those who are there, they did many mistakes and they did many, I mean, crimes and they are being there. They are banished to the island of Patmos. But John, Apostle John, he didn't do any, I mean, mistake and he didn't do any, I mean, I mean, crime, but only because of the, I mean, gospel of God, only because he preached the gospel in those areas. I mean, he is in the, in the island of Patmos. Hallelujah. And now we will come to the next point that is the, in the spirit, in the spirit, you know, there are mainly two topics. The main topic you can you can uh, divide into two topics. It is the and the first one is in the spirit, and second one is in the, the the Lord's day. The Lord's day. Now we will come to the in the spirit. The Lord's day we already discussed, and then now we will come to the in the spirit. What is the meaning which is written in the spirit? You know, in Malayalam it is written, Kartur Divasatilavan, Atma Vivashanai. Kartur Divasatilavan. Atma Vivashanai. I mean, so being in the spirit means, being in the spirit means the state when the total system of a body, the total system of a body and of a person controlled by the, by the spirit of God. The total system of a person controlled by the spirit of God. That means the body, the soul and the spirit will be totally controlled by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. So this was the situation that John was in Patmos and he was receiving the visions and the revelation, I mean, about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, there are, there are, there are mainly, I mean, four references you can, I mean, uh, think about uh, that John uh, being in the spirit in the book of Revelation itself. I mean, there are, I mean, four, four references you can, I mean, take from, uh, maybe you can read, I mean, Jason will read that verses, maybe Revelation chapter 1 verse 10 already be read, okay? We have finished that one. And the second one is uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 2. And once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And 17, verse 3. 17, verse 3. Yeah. The angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. And the fourth one is chapter 21, verse 10. Book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 10. And he, and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven, of, heaven from God. Amen. So these are the four references that we can see 
about John that he was taken in the spirit and he was in the spirit. That means he, he, he was in a, in, a, in a different realm, a, a different spiritual realm. Amen. So in order to get the visions and in order to get the revelation from God, we have to be in the spirit. Hallelujah. John was receiving the vision. John was receiving the revelation I mean, when he was in the spirit. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean temporarily, you know, sometimes we think, okay, okay, usually I'm reading Bible and uh, I am uh, I'm meditating Bible. That doesn't mean that you are getting a revelation from God. I mean, you will get it. But at the same time, if you're in the spirit and if you're prayerfully sitting in the presence of God and if you're filled with the, the Holy Spirit and you're reading the Bible or meditating the Bible, you are going to receive the visions and the revelations about the word of God. Hallelujah. So here, Apostle, uh, I'm sorry, Apostle John is, I mean, taken to the, in, in the spirit. I mean, the first one is at Patmos and the second one is in heaven. That means he was taken into heaven. And third one is uh, into the into the wilderness. He was taken into the wilderness. And fourth one is is uh, he was taken on the mountain on the mountain. So that's what we read here. So let us receive something from the Lord when we are in in the spirit. Hallelujah! When we are, I mean, I mean, filled with the spirit, uh, we are receiving the presence of God. We are receiving the word of God uh, in our life. I mean, this is the process of I mean, completely controlled and led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. John was completely and totally and fully, I mean, controlled by the um, by the presence of the Holy Spirit and taken into the into a, into the spiritual realm, and he was receiving the visions. Hallelujah. You know, not only I mean, uh, but sometimes we may also have feeling in 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 between the worship also. Maybe in between the prayer meeting or in between when when we are I mean meditating the Bible. I mean, or when we are attending in a prayer meeting or when we are attending in a worship service. You know, the time that we are so connected with the Spirit of God, the time that we are so connected with the Spirit of God and spending time in speaking tongues and enjoying the presence of God. Hallelujah. I know many of the people, I mean, today, I mean, attending in this meeting have experienced that, that experience of, I mean, I mean, connected with the Spirit of the Lord. I mean, sometimes, hallelujah. You know, I have many, many personal experience in my life that I've, 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 I've been in, 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 in the Spirit. You know, sometimes, you know, when, whenever we are sitting for prayer, whenever we are meditating the Word of God, the Spirit will, I mean, take us into another realm. And God will reveal many things into, into us. Hallelujah. Sometimes when, when you are walking, sometimes when you are praying, maybe sometimes when you are sleeping, the Spirit of the Lord will speak to us. Hallelujah. I have the experience. I mean, I, mean, I know that uh, there are many people already have the experience of, uh, I mean, filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I mean, just, uh, I mean, they are just connected with the Lord and the Spirit of God. Uh, and they are receiving the visions and the, I mean, I mean, the great, I mean, mama, great mysteries of the word of God in their life. Hallelujah. So I, I thank God for, I mean, everything that uh, we have received, uh, yeah, I mean, from the Lord uh, in the past days. Now, let us, let us, I mean, uh, 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 I mean uh, think about what are the four special experiences what are the small uh, i mean four special experiences of john in the spirit four special experiences of john in the in the spirit on the lord's day okay we are going to look into that one by one one by one maybe it is written in verses i mean chapter one verses 10 11 12 and 17 of chapter one okay so we are going to look into that what are the four things that happened when he was in the spirit? What are the four things that happened when he was in the spirit or on the Lord's day? Number one. We will read verse 10. What's on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Amen. Hallelujah. It says that uh, on, on the Lord's day, I heard a loud voice. I heard a loud voice. So the first experience, when he is taken into the into the spirit, into a spiritual realm, and and on the on the on the day of Lord means on the I mean, Lord's day, the first experience is he heard the voice of God. He heard the voice of God. Remember, when we are in trouble, when we are in trouble, we will really hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. We will really hear the voice of God. You know, there are, of course, uh, I mean, different types of voices and noises around us. 
I mean, there are many kinds of voices and noises around us. Maybe the voice of the human being, the voice of, uh, I mean, some companies and the voice of the people, those who are, I mean, staying nearby and the, the, the voice of the world and the, the, the voice of the Satan. You know, there are many people to advise. There are many people to criticize. There are many people to give advice for the people of God. But let us listen to the voice of God always. Hallelujah. You know, many a times what is happening for the Christian people that they are always looking for the other's counseling and they are looking for other's words. I mean, whatever they say, and they are just listening the, 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 the voice of the other people or the voice of the world or voice of the Satan or something. But let me tell you one thing this morning. I mean, always, I mean, the Christian people, the, the believers of God, be ready to receive the voice of God always. The voice of God, the, the voice of God. There are many noises and voices I mean, around us. Hallelujah. But don't look into that and don't listen to those things and, and let, let us all I mean, receive the voice of God always I mean, from the presence of God. Hallelujah. We will go to the second I mean, experience of Apostle John when he was in the spirit and on the Lord's day. What was that? And he saw the vision of Jesus. It is in verse 12, verse 12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstand was one like the son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet uh, with a golden sash around his chest. Amen. So, okay, thank you, thank you, Jason. So we'll be, uh, uh, we will be, I mean, elaborately thinking about all those points, uh, maybe in the, in the, in the, I mean, Friday Bible study. But let me tell you uh, only a few things about uh, these things. I mean, second, second experience that uh, I mean, Apostle John had was he saw the vision of Jesus. He saw the vision of Jesus. That says in verse twelve. I mean, so we will see the most meaningful visions, the depth of the visions while we go through the most difficult situation. Listen, John received various visions and about, I mean, about Jesus, the Son of Man. Now, now from verses I mean, 12 onwards, we understand that John was receiving the visions about the Son of Man, the Son of Man. That means the Son of Man means Jesus is God at the same time, but to, I mean, to, he took the form of a man and went through all the struggles and experience that, I mean, human being, I mean, uh, could suffer. You know, the human being is suffering many things. But Jesus, who was God, and he took the form of a man, came into this world, and he said, I'm going to suffer everything of this world. Because I have to know what is the sufferings of a human being. And he suffered everything until the death. I mean, even, even into the grave. I mean, he suffered everything. He went through all the struggles of this world. I mean, he doesn't have any, 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 any house to stay. I mean, he, he was not having anything in this world. And he was just suffering in, in different areas. Hallelujah. At the same time, I mean, we have to understand that, uh, I mean, he became, I mean, uh, Apostle John here, I mean, he became and strong and strong and more courageous because of the visions of about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So listen one thing, whenever we go through the difficult situation, Whenever we go through these struggles and troublesome situation, understand, I mean, if you are in the spirit, in the spirit, you will see the visions of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even, even the Jesus Christ is the son of man. It is written there. It is the son of man. Son of, son of man means he knows all the needs of the people. Hallelujah. He knows all the need of the people. I mean, he, he, he already experienced all the troubles of this world. And he said, I mean, I am, I mean, victorious over all all these things hallelujah i mean i have and the, the victory over i mean everything 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 victory over the satan victory of the world and victory of the desires of this world and the evil and everything hallelujah even i mean he was victorious on the death of this world hallelujah and the death and the and the hades of this world but he said i mean i can help you 
I am there. I know what is your situation. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me encourage you that, I mean, whatever it may be your problem, whatever it may be your struggle that you're going through, hallelujah, our God's presence is with us this morning to help us. Hallelujah. He is there to, I mean, encourage us. I mean, he's, he's there to, I mean, give us the vision and the revelation about the, the Son of Man, about the Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, there are almost, uh, I mean, 198 titles of Jesus Christ Christ in the Bible. You know, in, in, even in, in Book of Revelation, there are 35 titles written in, in Book of Revelation, just like Son of Man and, uh, and other, other, other many things. I mean, he's the Alpha and Omega and all those things. You know, there are mainly I mean, 198 references or titles which is connected with the Jesus Christ. But 35 titles in the Revelation, the Book of Revelation. You know, so we are supposed to know the greatness of God. When you think about the titles of God, when you think about the attributes of God, when we think about the character of God, hallelujah, we are understanding what is the greatness of our Jesus Christ, what is the greatness of our Jesus Christ. He is above all the other goddesses and gods, hallelujah. He is above all the other people. He is above all the leaders of this world, hallelujah. So let us understand that, I mean, whenever we are in the spirit, whenever we are in the spirit, and whenever we are connected with the, I mean, the spirit of God, hallelujah, and we, when we are, I mean, I mean, filled with with the, the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah! We will receive the 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 the, the, the greatness of I mean, God and greatness of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah! Now we will come to the third point that is He is so the spiritual condition of the church. He is so the spiritual condition of the church. It is in verse eleven, chapter one, verse eleven, and chapters two and three. Which said, write on the scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Amen. Thank you. You know, what is the third, uh, third experience that uh, I mean, Apostle John had? He saw the spiritual condition of the Christian church. He saw the spiritual condition of the Christian church. That is written in chapter 1, verse 11, and also when you go through chapters 2 and 3, chapters 2 and 3, the spiritual situation of the seven churches are elaborately described in those chapters. We'll be looking into that I mean, later in the Bible study meeting. I mean, so uh, he was, I mean, getting all the visions about the situation of the churches. He was, I mean, getting the vision about the spiritual situation, the spiritual situation of those churches. You know, the weak points of the churches, the people of the churches. The appreciations are there. The mistakes of the people are there. The corrections are there. The painful situation, hardship that the people of God were going through. And also the warning also is written in the book. What's the reason? You know, when he was in the spirit, when he was in the spirit, in the spirit and in the Lord's day, that means the painful day of the year. Hallelujah. I mean, the Christians were, I mean, persecuted. Even John also was, I mean, being there, I mean, alone. There was nobody to support him. There was nobody to, I mean, embrace him. There was nobody to, I mean, I mean, exhort him from the word of God. But he's alone there. At the same time, he's receiving the vision from God about the, the spiritual situation of the Christian church. Hallelujah. Even today also. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only the pastors, not only the elders. Hallelujah. Everyone those who are praying in the presence of God, you will get something from the Lord. You will get some visions from the Lord. And I mean, what is the situation? What is the spiritual situation of our church? Hallelujah. So that's what I, I'm also I mean, desiring that you have to pray in the presence of God and receive the vision about our the, the present situation, the present I mean, spiritual situation of our church. Hallelujah. The, the outward or the, or the material situation we know. But at the same time, I mean, we need to know what is the spiritual situation, what is the spiritual condition of our local church. Hallelujah. This morning, I encourage every one of you. I mean, I encourage every one of you to receive some vision from the Lord through the word of God, through the word of God. Hallelujah. And when you are getting that one, and when you are receiving that one, you can share with the church people. And this is the vision. And this is the I mean, insight that I have given. I mean, God has given me from the word of God. And I'm just sharing with you as an exhortation. 
And that will be a great blessing for the people of God, those who are gathering in the prayer meeting. Hallelujah. So that's what I said. When, when you pray, when you're sitting in the spirit, I mean, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the God's presence will be there and God will speak to you and you can share with the people of God and that will encourage the people of God in the coming days. Hallelujah. So may God bless you all I mean, to receive the spiritual I mean, situations of the, 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 the vision about the spiritual situations of the, I mean, I mean, of the churches and the church people. Hallelujah. And, and the fourth, I mean, fourth experience that uh, Apostle John was having it was he has fallen down at the feet of Jesus he has fallen down at the feet of Jesus it is in verse 17 verse 17 you read that when I saw him I fell at his feet as though dead then he placed his right hand on me and said do not be afraid I am the first and the last he has fallen down at the feet of Jesus you know fallen down is the expression of submission. For example, when he was just seeing the visions about Jesus Christ in a, in a, in a different way, there is no time to elaborate all those things. We will, I mean, I mean, elaborately describe all those things. Uh, I mean, later in the Bible study, you know, he was getting many, many, many visions about Jesus Christ, the speciality of Jesus Christ, the greatness of Jesus Christ when he was sitting in the presence of God and when he was filled with the spirit of God and when he was in the spirit, when he was in the spirit, hallelujah. So when he was sitting there, he was receiving many visions. You know, when he was seeing Jesus Christ in a different way as a son of man, he just fell down at the feet of Jesus in vision. He just fell down at the feet of Jesus in vision. Hallelujah. That means falling down, falling down in the, in the presence of God, in the feet of Jesus Christ is the expression of submission. So we will fall down when we see the greatness of God. You know, most of the time, the people of God, they are always looking about what is our greatness and what is my talent and what is my ability and what I can do, even I mean, uh, uh, dear brother Rajit was I mean sharing something about uh, the pride from the from the Sam Sam number one hundred and forty about the pride. You know, it's it's a dangerous thing that the, the people of God is if the if the people of God is having the pride or proud or something, it's a dangerous thing. It should not be there. But we have to be submissive in the hands of God. You know, when we think about ourselves, we will be proud about many things. But when we think about Jesus Christ who was God and he came down to this earth and he became just like a man and he lived here and I mean lived for the people of God and he died when we think about the greatness of God, greatness of Jesus Christ, automatically we will surrender, we will submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God, hallelujah. So that's the reason I'm, I'm sharing about something from that, you know, Apostle John was surrendering himself. Apostle John was, I mean, falling down at the feet of Jesus Christ. I mean, when he was receiving the vision about Jesus Christ, vision about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us understand what is the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when we understand that the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will surrender, we will submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Again, when we think about the, the, the I mean, uh, loneliness and struggles that, uh, I mean, I mean uh, Apostle John was having at Patmos, he was trying to turn that loneliness and struggles into the abundance of blessing. To the abundance of blessing. You know, he had many problems in there. He had many problems. You know, there was nobody to support him. There was nobody to help him. There was nobody to read a Bible verse or, I mean, to, to increase something from the word of God. You know, we people are blessed by God. As we were discussing on Friday, we are the blessed people because we have a chance and we have an opportunity and privilege to read the Bible and to, I mean, to hear the Bible and to obey the word of God. We are privileged people. We are blessed people by the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have all the facilities here. We have all the facilities here. We are in a comfort zone. But now what is happening? Apostle John, I mean, he is banished to do the island of Patmos. There is nobody to help him. He is in loneliness. I mean, there is nobody. 
It's a lonely place, hallelujah. But he was trying to, I mean, turn that loneliness to the abundance of blessing. He received many visions that is the blessing of God. Hallelujah. You know, the barren and horrible, I mean, island became a treasury of divine visions. It's a great thing to understand. You know, the island of Patmos is a barren land. It's a horrible, I mean, land. Horrible, I mean, island. Okay, but he was trying to take it as a, turn it as a treasury of divine visions. That means he received many revisions when, when he was going through that difficult situation. You know, you have to think about one minute, I mean, one minute about Apostle John, that God enabled him to write seven letters to seven churches. He enabled him to write seven letters to the seven churches. One thing you have to understand, while he was in Ephesus, as a, as a minister or as a, or as a preacher or as a pastor, while he was in Ephesus, he was preaching and ministering and engaging in a local church at Ephesus. But now, when he is in loneliness, when he is alone there, when he is going through the struggle, he is preaching and he is, I mean, giving and writing a lecture, not only for one church, but he is writing many churches. I mean, many, uh, writing to many churches, many churches through his letters and encouraging all the churches there. Hallelujah. So let the world say that your life is finished. You know, when John was banished to the island of Patmos, all the emperors and all the I mean, the Roman government, everyone said, okay, the, the life of, I mean, John is finished. I mean, there is no more John. I mean, and I mean, sometimes, you know, we also feel that the world will, be, will say, the worldly people will say, okay, your life is finished. You cannot do anything more. I mean, everything is over. But, and, and, and you, you, you cannot do anything. Then, then, you know, what is happening? God will say, the world will say like that. But the God will say that, I mean, no, you are going to, I mean, be blessed and your church is going to be expanded and you are going to be used by God for the expansion of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In some situations, we also think. And our church people also thinking that everything is over. Our church is over. I mean, we cannot I mean, do anything, I mean, in the coming days. But, I mean, God's presence is saying that the spirit of the Lord is saying that, I mean, you are going to be used by the Lord, I mean, for the expansion of the kingdom of God and our church is going to be used by I mean used by God as a vessel to bring to 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 share the gospel to other people hallelujah and God will use us hallelujah let us listen the word of God let us listen the voice of God not the I mean word of the I mean not the I mean advice of the people or, or the worldly people let us listen from the word of God and if we are in the spirit if you are in the spirit or if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, I mean, remember, no evil can touch you. No evil can touch you, hallelujah. And no devil can snatch you out of the hands of God, hallelujah. This is, this is, this is the, the word of assurance. This is the word of assurance that, hallelujah, if you believe that, I mean, you are living in the spirit, Hallelujah. If you believe that you are living in the spirit, hallelujah. No, no trouble of this world. I mean, no, I mean, evil of this world, no devil of this world can snatch you out of the hands of God. Hallelujah. Let us believe in that word and God is going to bless our church and God is going to, I mean, bless the people of God. I mean, mightily and using in the coming days. Hallelujah. You know, here, let me tell you one more thing. That Emperor Domitian thought that this John is not going to come back. I'm just, I just want to I mean, tell you one thing, a special thing. That one is, you know, uh, John, I mean, uh, Emperor Domitian was thinking that John is not at all going to come back. He will die there somewhere. But Domitian died in AD 96. You have to think about that. Domitian, the emperor who sent uh, John to the island of Patmos, he died in AD 96. The next emperor came. His name was, I mean, Nerva. His name was Nerva. History says like this, in his time, in the time of Nerva, Apostle John came back to Ephesus, Ephesus, and died in Ephesus around AD 100. The history says, it's not written in Bible. You know, the, 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 the emperor who sent Apostle John to the island of Patmos, I mean, he died in AD 96. But God never 
dies. Hallelujah. And God, I mean, is still doing the miracles for the people of God. Hallelujah. I mean, Emperor Domitian was thinking, I mean, the, the, the life of John is over. I mean, he will not come back to Ephesus. But what happened? I mean, the person who sent him to the Patmos, he died. The Domitian died. Then in the time of next emperor, I mean, Nerva, I mean, I mean, history says John came back to Ephesus and he died in, I mean, AD 100. Hallelujah. This is the work of God. This is the miracle of God. Hallelujah. Remember, if God has a specific plan about you and me, hallelujah, no emperor can destroy you. Hallelujah. No king can destroy you. No worldly power can destroy you. No satanic, I mean, power can, I mean, destroy you or kill you. I mean, hallelujah. They cannot take your life before the right arm of God. Hallelujah. They cannot take your life. They cannot do anything with you before the right time of God. Hallelujah. We will be going from this world in the time of God. God has a plan. God has a purpose. But remember, I mean, God will use us, I mean, in that breaker period for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We have to be aware about the plan of God in our life. Hallelujah. Let the world say that everything is over. Hallelujah. They cannot destroy you. Hallelujah. The kings of the world cannot destroy you. The satanic powers cannot destroy you. Hallelujah. And because we know that we have, I mean, God's plan on us. Hallelujah. God has a specific plan about the people of God and God will do the miracles. Hallelujah. Especially two phrases are written here. Two phrases, I mean, important phrases are in verse, I mean, verse 10 of this, I mean, chapter 1. What is that? John was in Patmos. John was in Patmos. And the second one is, John was in the spirit. Listen there. John was in Patmos. That is reality. That is reality. The Patmos, which is, which is, which is a lonely place and there is nobody to help him. There is, it's a troublesome situation. I mean, no, we, we don't want to go there. But John decided that, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go there. Because he was knowing that God is going to use me even in that situation. Hallelujah. So John was in Patmos. Okay, at the same time, and John was in the spirit. Listen very carefully. Even in the, in the, in this situation of the Patmos, he was in the spirit. Two phrases, in the spirit. So we have seen that Patmos was like, and we have seen that the pain and the, and the hardship that John was undergoing. But no matter where a man is, no matter how hard his life is, no matter what he is passing through, or no matter what, I mean, uh, the, the situation that he is going through, he may still be in the spirit. If a person is in the spirit and if he is, I mean, knowing that I am in the spirit, even on the Patmos also, the glory and the messages of God will come to him. Hallelujah. I mean, he cannot go to God. He cannot, I mean, go to the churches. But I understand that the, the glory of God, the messages of God came into him, into, to, unto him where, where he was sitting in the Patmos. Hallelujah. So this is the presence of God that which encourages us this morning. Hallelujah. Let us all close our in the presence of God and let us pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I was, I was thinking about all these things this morning. Hallelujah. Maria Mandi is going to lead us in prayer now. Hallelujah. You know, I, I think we shall be praying. But just before that, let me just, I mean, I mean uh, summarize the messages today. Hallelujah. And we are, I mean, going, whenever, whenever we are going through the troublesome situation in our life. Hallelujah. And John was banished to the island of Patmos. I mean, because of the word of God, because of the testimony of Jesus Christ, he was banished to the Patmos where there is nobody. I mean, where there is, I mean, nobody to support him. Where there is no, I mean, there is nobody to help him. Hallelujah. I mean, where there is nobody to, I mean, exhort him. But he was in the in the island of Patmos, I mean, with the Lord, and he was in.